Hello family, Pastor Alaulu from Christian Pentecostal Church here and uh, we are continuing our devotional series on uh, today. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, the verse that we, or the verses, the portion of scripture we're focusing on is found in Joshua chapter 24 from verse 13 through 15. Um, please grab your Bible, open it up, Joshua 24, 13 through 15. Let's read the word of God together. Reading from the King James Version says, And I have given you a land for which you did not labor. Now, a little context. This is Joshua speaking to the children of Israel and says, Thus saith the Lord. Right? He says, And I have, so the I here is God, it says, And I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which you build not. And ye dwell in them of the vineyards and olive yards which ye planted not, not do you eat. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. A little context. So this is Joshua on literally like just on his deathbed. This is at the end of Joshua. And he calls the children of Israel together and the elders and says, hey, I'm going. It's about time for me to go on to my father's, go the way of the earth. You know, it's about time for me to die. But let me deliver this last message to you. Thus says the Lord. And, you know, the, I'm starting from verse 15 because there is something very interesting there. Because, you know, this whole concept Actually, you know what? I'm track back for a second. So I'm studying the Old Testament right now. And, you know, I'm right now I'm in the book of Joshua. And I'm actually, this is the wrapping up the book of Joshua. And I've already entered the ju judges. But when the Bible talks about that the covenant, you know, the old covenant is a shadow of the new. You know, it, I'm seeing it. Like, it's amazing that I'm seeing it as I'm reading. And, you know, I encourage you, if you haven't, like dive into the Old Testament and you will find how amazing and awe-inspiring and jaw-dropping God is and it will teach you so much more about who he is and it will lead you to the appreciation of Christ even more of Calvary even more but anyway okay so shadow of things right so here we see that God says in verse 13 he says that I have given you a land that you didn't work for. You know, you came here. The, the, the fruit you're eating, the, for the vineyard of the house you're eating, you didn't plant them. The cities you're sitting, you're living in, you didn't do that work. I gave it to you. But now that I've given to you, don't forget what I have done for you and serve me in sincerity. And Joshua then says, choose. Choose this day who you're going to serve. Do you want to continue serving the gods of the past, the gods on the other side of the, of the Nile back in Egypt, the gods of the Amorites of the land you live in, the gods who are on the side of the flood? Or will you serve God, especially because of all he has done for you? He says, choose. Then Joshua says, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And here the children of Israel go on and say, you know, we will serve God. And Joshua says, you won't serve God because God is a jealous God that, you know, you won't get away scot-free disobeying him. And it says, no, we will serve the word God, the Lord. Who else will we serve? Because, you know, of everything he's done, how could we serve anybody else? And, you know, it's easy. It's really easy for us that when we read, when we read of the amazement and amazingness and wonders of God, of how he delivered them in Egypt, of how he led them, you know, the 10 plagues led them through the Red Sea, kept them in the wilderness, you know, even the, them conquering Canaan, like of how amazing God is and all he did. It is easy for us to criticize and say, how could you turn away? Like after you saw God did all that, after he kept you, 
Because as soon as you enter ju judges, even back then, back in the wilderness, we saw the ridiculousness. As soon as you enter judges, you see again, oh, they serve for a bit. Judge comes along, they serve for a bit, then they fall away again. Then they serve for a bit, they fall away again. It's like this continuous cycle. And you know, Joshua said it, he said, God is jealous. He wants you and your everything. And he says that, well, listen, if you, like, in you, see, he is holy, and you won't get away scot free. And we see it happen. And but we can sit and say, man, God did all that, and they turned away. But if we were to do that and look at them that way, and I speak to myself as I speak to you as well, it's utter hypocrisy. Before we start looking at them and talking about the, the speck in their eyes, let's consider the beam in ours. Because here's the thing. We live in this new covenant. As Christians, this new covenant is far greater than the old. In the old covenant, we see that God delivered them from Egypt. We see he kept their enemies abated. We see he, they marched through the Red Sea. We see the cloud. We see the fire. We see the manna. We see it all. We see Jericho's walls fall down. We see God con conquer the land for them. We see he give them something that they did not work for. But in this new covenant, we get the same. Because the old is a shadow. We get the same but far greater. In this new covenant that we dwell in, God himself came down. And took our punishment, the weight of all our sin, and he hung on the cross for our sakes, for mine and for yours and for the sake of the whole world. How can we say to the children of Israel with all boldness, how could you fall away when we do it every single day? And yet we have a greater testimony. We have a greater covenant. Let us not fall into that hypocrisy. But understand that it's by his grace that we can stand. And that we can overcome by the blood of the lamb, by the word, lamb and the word of our testimony. And Joshua had it right. He said, remember the Lord. Remember all he has done for you. Do not let this word depart from you. So I say to myself and I say to you, remember the Lord. You know, I'm big on songs with this song. You know, it really, it really highlights this moment. It's like this, this portion, this thing right here, this the, the, the magnitude of this salvation song it says, when I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up, he turned me around and he placed my feet on solid ground and it makes me want to shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. When I think about the Lord, when I think about all he has done for me, that in itself should keep us all on the straight and narrow. Because in him giving his all, in him giving of himself, in him taking our punishment. As the Apostle Paul said, what more is deserved? What more is our reasonable service? But the giving of ourselves. So let us remember the Lord. And in the moments where we fall, let us fall on his grace, run to him and remember him once again and strive again and again and again 
not to repeat the same. So as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.